Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe, touch, and like, click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So I'll push you the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating how to implement a multiple regression, an OLS, in Python using the stats models package. First of all, let's import our usual uh, libraries, which are NumPy to work with arrays, pandas to work with data frames. We'll use real world Yahoo Finance data, so let's import that. And let's also import our today's hero, statsmodels.api, and let's import it as SM. So having imported the packages, let's prepare our data set. We'll use the Yahoo Finance download function and we'll perform a quite simple multiple linear regression. We'll seek to evaluate the impact of the uh, GBPUSD, the pound exchange rate, and the FTSE 100 uh, stock market index onto the returns of a UK bank such as Lloyd's. So for that, we'll just need the three tickers in question. So first, our dependent variable will be Lloyd's, Lloyd.L, that's the finance ticker. We'll need the pound, GBPUSD equals X, and we'll need the FTSE, which is just carré FTSE. Then we need to specify our uh, time, uh, our sample. So let's start February and 2018 uh, and go until 2023, February 28th. And we just need the closing prices. So let's just retrieve the close. So if we um, check the uh, preliminary results, we'll see the prices. Um, and the, the foreign exchange rate, obviously, and the index value. But we need the returns, so let's do the PCT change. Um, and that would present uh, a first row of NA, so let's just drop NA using the respective pandas functions. And that would uh, generate uh, 1303 observations across the three variables in question, so that is sufficient data pre processing for now. So let's call this data and let's define our dependent and independent. So our y, our uh, dependent variable, will be the Lloyd's returns from our uh, data frame. And uh, to make it easier for the stats models to handle, uh, let's convert it into a NumPy array. For the uh, independent variables, Let's say that we want an NumPy array that would be our original uh, data frame, but with the Lloyd's column drop. So data drop, Lloyd's, and as uh, by default it drops alongside indices, we need to specify that we drop alongside columns. So axis equals one. So that correctly defines our Y and X. So if we refer to Y and refer to X, we see that they are uh, arrays of uh, correct dimensions. So now let's define our regression model. So let's say regression is stats models OLS, uh, and we input our dependent and independent variables, or as uh, stats models call uh, those our endogenous variable, which is y, and our exogenous variables, which are the x's. So y comma x. And here, if we would like to have a constant in our regression, we can specify so using sm.addConstant. And that defines our model. What is left to do is just to fit it. So results equals regression.fit. So we have fitted our regression, but how to see the results? Well, the easiest thing to do is, would be to uh, go results.summary, and that provides a table that's very similar to something that you would uh, um, have in Stata or eViews or even Data Analysis tab in Excel. However, there will be a lot of additional statistics and uh, useful metrics uh, to consider. Uh, most importantly, we have got our coefficients and standard errors reported. So we have got our coefficient on the GBPUSD exchange rate and our coefficient on the uh, FTSE 100 index. So we can see that Lloyd's is a pretty high beta stock. 
um, the beta is 1.27 with a standard of 0.04, overwhelmingly significant. Uh, whereas the GBBUSD exchange rate uh, coefficient is also positive and significant, meaning that whenever the pound uh, appreciates against the dollar, Lloyd's uh, enjoys superior performance, and that's quite uh, standard uh, considering Lloyd's um, business model and uh, what Lloyd's is as a company. We can also see the constant, the alpha here, is statistically indistinguishable from zero, meaning that Lloyd's performed in line with the market expectation of the fa past five years. And we can also see the p-values that can be useful in assessing statistical significance, as well as the 5% confidence interval for the coefficients. Uh, we can see the Durbin Watson statistic, the first um, evaluation of whether the model suffers from water correlation or not. Here we can see that Durbin Watson is quite close to 2, and therefore we need not worry about autocorrelation or at least serial correlation of order 1. We have got the R squared reported alongside the F statistic and the p value for the joint significance of all explanatory variables, again, overwhelmingly significant at any uh, reasonable confidence threshold. And we can also have a look at the degrees of freedom and the number of observations, which can be useful for additional testing later on down the line, as well as the harky bera statistic for the normality of residuals and the p-value for the harky bera um, that is reported here automatically alongside the skewness and kurtesis of the residuals. So we can see that the stats models summary uh, provides us with a lot of diagnostic stacks with a lot of diagnostic tests already, even without us asking for that. Uh, however, to make our work with the results um, variable from the stats models package a little bit more flexible, let me show you around with some other commands that can be useful. So results params, for example, retrieves an array of coefficients in the same order they are reported in the table, so constant x1, x2. Uh, results bse, reports our standard errors. Again, those are um, OLS standard errors without uh, any uh, robust um, features enabled. However, you could return heteroscedistic consistent standard errors quite easily. And there are three uh, main uh, variations that uh, the basic stats models package provides, which is HC not underscore SE. Those are just the Huber White um, standard errors. And you have also got other versions, which are HC1 SE and HC2 SE, which use various uh, heteroscedasticity uh, adjustments when calculating them. Again, my advice would be to check whether the uh, results are significant with the standard errors from the OLS, so uh, results.bse, and also check uh, whether they are robust to arbitrary heteroscedasticity with HC0 underscore SE. Uh, other useful uh, methods for the uh, results in stats models uh, involve residual degrees of freedom, df underscore resid, that returns uh, the number of residual degrees of freedom, which can be useful for additional uh, hypothesis testing. We can retrieve the R squared quite intuitively, and again, up to a much higher level of precision than reporting in the table, you can see that's rounded and that's unrounded. Uh, and we can also return something like the Akai information criteria or the Bayesian or Schwartz information criterion using a simple method. This is how flexible it is to work with the stats models package in Python and use it to estimate multiple linear regressions and inform your further modeling. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.